That'll work. I feel like the least important person here now. So, <laughs> any uh, questions about cannabis? You you can still direct those to me though. <laughs> so, a uh, little background on myself. Um, I have a background in economics, finance, and physics. Uh, I came to Knoxville for grad school, met my wife, Anna, over there, um, and we started uh, the largest exclusively local tap hall in the state of Tennessee, craft beer. So what is craft? Uh, craft is small, so small means, in relative terms, less than 1.5 billion beers produced per year, so it doesn't seem that small. Uh, independent means that 25% of your ownership or control is not held by another person involved in the craft beer industry who is not, or sorry, the beer industry who is not a craft producer. So in other words, if Budweiser buys 25% of your business, that's not a craft beer, that's, that's you're no longer a craft beer brewery. Uh, those are the two most qualifications in my mind. So, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Han and I uh, came up here not suspecting anything, just getting a PhD in physics. Met my wife, she went to start a bakery, and of course I was like, let's, yeah, let's make this a bigger business. So we did, and we opened this beer bakery, which turned into, like I said, the biggest all-local tap on the state of Tennessee. Uh, to give you an example of the props, I have this here for this stone, six-pack of stone for two reasons. One, because you guys ask a lot of questions, and two, because this is craft beer. This is an independently owned brewery. So Michelob is not independently owned. Gingling, I'm not entirely certain. Uh, I think they actually are family owned still, so they could be. Um, but that was our focus, is local Knoxville beer. Uh, let's see. Um, I've sat on the board of directors for four corporations. Uh, I've worked with essentially every brewery in town. Um, I've consulted for local breweries, tap rooms, bars, uh, we've been featured in Tennessee Craft Beer Magazine, and I have, my wife and I have a monthly uh, segment on beer and cooking on WBR. So that's just a little background. It's the most wonderful experience of my entire life. I, I've never taken a turn like this. I never thought my life would go this way. I drank Coors Light for most of my life. Nothing wrong with Coors Light. It's good for, I mean, if you're mowing the lawn, it's great. I mean, you know, if you're eating tacos, if you're eating really spicy food, you need Coors Light. That's what you need. Really cold, like the Rockies cold. <laughs> but otherwise, I mean, you know, you want a good beer. So, all right. So the business of craft beer. In 2017, overall beer sales went down by 1.2 percent, but craft beer went up by 5 percent, which means that craft is slowly starting to overtake major beer corporations. It's had a 12.7% market share. What that translates into in 2017 is 120,000 jobs, over 500,000 currently. In the state of Tennessee, we are number 22 in craft brewers. We have 82. If you compare that to, say, uh, North Carolina, who has like 400 or something like that, it's pretty low. Um, and our per capita is actually very low. We're 38. But you see here, since 2014, it's been a steep rise. In Knoxville, and this is really the wild thing, if you consider we have about 80 breweries in Tennessee, we have 15 here in the Knoxville Era Breweries Association alone, and this is not including members who aren't, there are people who are not in the, Knox, uh, the, the Cobb Association. I can name you three or four breweries right now who aren't members of Cobb, who are Knoxville breweries. So we're probably up to 20 at this point. So, here it gets down to the guts. Two issues that are being, that are critical right now for restaurants and breweries. Breweries are dealing with uh, repercussions of environmental impact. Uh, CO2 emissions are one of the big things. And you can see, I mean, like this is a big thing now all over the world. People are just, it's a crusade. They're trying to find out ways to recycle CO2, et cetera, et cetera. Restaurants, since there's a huge focus on locally sourced food, Organic food, that's a huge cost for rest, uh, restaurants. It's massive. So they're struggling with that. Is it viable for us to become locally sourced restaurants? Does that make sense for us? Can we charge I mean, does it make sense? Got to make those margins. And restaurants, restaurants have a terrible failure rate. In three years, you generally are going to lose it. I mean, in, in general, most businesses 
50% of small businesses fail in the first five years. And if they survive the next, the ones that survive that in the next five, 30% of those fail. So small business is not easy. Restaurant business, in particularly difficult. So here's where it comes in. On-site birth. It's the best. Your margins are great. You don't have to pay distributors. You're making everything in-house. You have your own ingredients. You have different uh, providers for hops and malts. You can make up to 90% margins on your beer when you sell it in-house. That's incredible. That's an amazing margin. But, Mr. CO2, this guy comes along. So you have carbon emissions, which are a problem for breweries. Funny enough, greenhouses love CO2. People actually pay to have carbon enrichment in their uh, greenhouses. This actually brings their yield, their crops at 25%. So, the solution, with my partners back here and myself, is something we call fermentation. What this essentially does is we use the CO2 from the fermenters to power the greenhouses. In other words, that CO2 is now enriching the yields of the greenhouses and we take the biomass from the fermenters as fertilizer. So everything coming out of, the, out of the brewery is going into the greenhouse. What does that mean? You can sell that on your menu. You have a garden to table brew pub. And brew pub, by the way, means a restaurant brewery that sells 25% uh, uh, or more of their beer on site. That's, this is the yield you're looking at, 25% yield on, your, on, your, uh, on your, uh, your produce because of the carbon enrichment, which you haven't had to pay for because you use it from your brewery and it's not being pumped out into the atmosphere. Reduced emissions, uh, farm fresh ingredients at your location. So literally, farm fresh is no longer 50 miles from your place, it's 50 feet. If that, your, your produce is coming a few steps from the greenhouse to your plate. And what does that mean? That also means your costs are low. I mean, you, you made this stuff on site. You haven't had to pay for fertilizer, the costs you have. You haven't had to pay for carbon enrichment. Your margins are fantastic, and you're doing something better for the environment at large. Also, with these margins, you have the opportunity to give back to the community. So you can use these crops at these incredibly low margins, cents for, for, for vegetables, to give back to food banks, uh, you know, any, uh, any uh, shelters, whatever else. So you can actually, you can afford to contribute back to the parts of your community that need it. Why does that matter? Because healthy economies, healthy communities are healthy economies. I mean, if you have a high unemployment rate, I, I mean, let's face it, hunger is a huge issue in Knoxville, especially in downtown. You get a massive uh, unemployment. If you've ever been on Broadway, you've seen it. People living in shelters, they don't know, half of them have mental illness, they don't know what to do. If you can start to solve that problem, then you can create a better, not only are you doing better for your fellow man, but you're also doing better for your company. So doing good in the community is good for business. And finally, the ingredients in your garden can be used for exclusive ingredients in your beer. So nobody can get those from you. Say when we get cannabis legalized, you can put it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you gonna say? So this is the basis of Greenhouse Brewery, and we will be, we plan to open in North Knoxville uh, in the coming year, and uh, let's see, yeah, if you'd like to follow our development, our handle is at Greenhouse Brew Company. Any questions about cannabis or anything? <laughs>